Um, okay. I'm not going to, I mean, I already talked about this a little bit. Um, when it comes to gender nonconformity, right, and we are really almost done here, when it comes to gender nonconformity, uh, scholars recognize that there is a conventional component, right, a component to what counts as male versus female, uh, you know, uh, dress, interest, behavior. There is some socially, quote unquote, socially kind of influence or socially constructed component, but nevertheless, all societies differentiate between males and females. So if I go back to 18th century America and look at the way the founding fathers of this country dressed, they had these big frilly wigs, you know, I mean, like curly, long curly hair, these frilly blouses and tights, like stockings. And for us, if you dress that way, they're going to think you're dressed in drag. That's very feminine for us today. But in their time, that's how men dress. So that's conventional. But that's not how women dressed at their time. The women there, those very billowing like dresses and the, you know, whatever. So the men and women dressed differently. They didn't dress the same. Even in our age, even this like unisex, like I'm wearing what I'm wearing and what you're wearing is clearly men's clothing. You know, women's blouse is always cut like curved and, you know, it's always different. Like men and women are not the same, right? So there's some cultural component to that, but the idea is that whatever is largely generally recognized as being masculine or feminine in your society, you're actually bound in the Sharia to sort of conform to that. Well, can I just be my own autonomous individual and throw off the shackles of society? No. I mean, that, that's Rousseau, that's the 19th century, that's secular European psychologization of the self and radical autonomy and individual, that's not Islam, right? So choose your paradigm, choose your religion, but, you know, don't try to mix the two, they're not the same. Dress, as we said, strictly forbidden on the basis of the hadith qu quoted, to imitate the opposite sex in dress, accoutrements, etc., as conventionally recognized in one society. What about mannerisms? I'm a male, I have a high voice, or I kind of have effeminate, you know, walk or, you know, hand movements, right? Um, the scholars actually, again, this is a phenomenon, we see this in society, right? A man could be even heterosexual, but kind of effeminate, right? It's this, the, or a woman could be kind of masculine. And, all right, scholars recognize that a person could have gender atypical mannerisms, gait, voice, etc. cetera. Um, the man would be called muhannath, right? That's a male with effeminate mannerisms and a woman mudhakara, a female with masculine mannerisms. What did the scholars say about this, right? They said these, these mannerisms, they could be either khilqi, which means constitutional, like the person's just, it's natural to that person, or it could be affected, like they're taking it on, they're, they're purposely doing it. We know if it's purposeful, then that's forbidden. We've already seen that, right? So purposely affect, affecting such mannerisms is haram by consensus. However, if it comes to somebody naturally, right, effeminate tendencies to a man or sort of more masculine, you know, uh, to a woman, right, the scholars here have differed. Some of them said that the person should try to recondition himself or herself, you know, uh, try to make reasonable efforts to bring their behavior more in line with what's typical of their sex. And if they don't try to, then they're sinful for not trying. But if they try to and they can't do it after a reasonable effort, then the blame drops and, you know, the, the, that's fine. Okay. Other scholars said they're not even obligated to even attempt as long as it came to them naturally and they didn't deliberately do it. They don't have to. It would normally make your life probably easier, just socially speaking, especially for a man. You know, I mean, there's a particular stigma in most societies against effeminate men often, you know, it'd probably make one's life easier, you know, to, to kind of rehabituate if possible. Some people might find that very difficult. And if they do, then they're actually not blamed for that. And they should not be um, made fun of. It would actually be haram to do that. They should not be categorized as being any particular way, or it should not be assumed that they engage in particular sexual behavior, like same sex behavior, just because they might appear as feminine, right? This is, these are all, this is all vun which is kind of um, suspicious thinking of someone, and this is actually haram to, to, to um, have that in Islam, okay? 